Welcome to part three. I'm just going to continue where I left off. So this is actually a track I was working on ages ago. Um, and just for the sake of this tutorial, I've taken out everything apart from the chorus. So what I've got here is essentially the chorus. I've taken out everything else, the verses, etc. Um, and I've taken out all the instrument channels that would have been on the left hand side here um, that I was using for the intro, verse and bridge sections. Um, I've just left myself with these chorus parts because that's just what I'll be using uh, for this example. Um, so I've got the structure of the track laid out um, at the top here with markers. You can see that the chorus sections are in red. So yeah, you might be working on a track and you've got a chorus section. Um, so here's my first chorus. Um, and instead of playing in everything again where this second chorus is, you could copy and paste this chorus um, paste it here and even paste it a third time at the end there. Uh, musically speaking and in terms of authenticity, um, you might not want to completely do it like that, but I'm just showing you what you can do um, and you can take it as you like. Um, I'll touch on that issue of authenticity towards the end of the video. So just to show you, um, if I zoom into um, these tracks that I've got here, so again, this is my chorus. So I've got guitar parts, bass and some beats at the bottom. Um, and you might have noticed that the regions have this little bit extra at the start and the end. Um, it looks like it's overshooting the chorus marker. But that's not a problem. Um, I've essentially just got a bit extra at the start. Um, that little run up from when you press record. Um, and there's a bit of a sound there as it goes into the chorus, which is a natural run up. So um, I want to keep that. And then at the end, um, the audio just naturally fades out and tails off um, as the next verse starts. So not really a problem. Um, and this stuff at the end, I'm just going to leave as is um, because that's the sort of natural fade out. Um, I'll just play it quickly for you. So that's where verse two would start. Um, you kind of get the idea. But I am actually going to trim some of this at the start and the reason for that is partly to clear up some space and partly so I can just give myself a bit of a guide for when I'm copy and pasting. Um, when I recorded this track I did it to a metronome. Um, so where I've put these markers um, for the choruses, they aren't just vague areas where the chorus hits. Um, these are pinpoint moments where the chorus starts. So. I need to make sure I'm copy and pasting to an exact degree. Um, otherwise, I'm going to cause myself problems with timing and such. Um, now, if you've got quite a random point where your earliest region um, is starting, um, so let's just say um, your earliest region was, was there. And remember, we're copy and pasting from um, it copy and paste from the, the earliest region um, in the block of regions that you're copy and pasting. Um, when you go to copy and paste, um, you might be guessing a bit around here when it comes to making sure you're putting the playhead um, in the right position for pasting. So I was kind of estimating there. Um, and you can sort of say, well, the waveform's there, chorus starts at pretty much there, um, but it might not be exact. And if it's not exact, when you start layering more instruments on top and linking this up with different sections either side, um, the verses and, and bridge, it can have a bit of a negative knock-on effect. And in some cases, it can be noticeable in a bad way, which you don't want. Um, yeah, it's a little hard to explain. I don't know if I'm explaining it in a good way. Essentially, if my region starting points are not at a clear position here, then I might struggle in terms of exactly where I should be putting the playhead to paste this. Anyway, whether you understood it or not, there is a way to make sure you are definitely pasting in the right place. So um, just so I can be exact, I'm going to bring uh, these up to bar 24. 
And I'm sort of clearing the regions up as well by doing this, getting rid of any unnecessary region space. I'm not going to go right up to bar 25, um, because as I said before, I've got the little natural lead in there to the chorus. So now I know that the chorus is starting here, um, but I've just got one bar of buffer at the start um, where the regions are starting. So chorus starting at bar 25, um, but the regions here starting at exactly bar 24. And when I copy and paste this chorus, um, I'm going from the start of the earliest regions, um, which are these three at bar 24. Now I'll copy all these regions and I'll go to here. So that is the exact point where the second chorus is starting, bar 57. Um, but remember on our regions, we've got one bar of buffer at the start. So for that reason, I'm going to put the playhead um, at bar 56, a bar earlier. So there we go, I've copy and pasted the chorus. Um, and I know it's in the right place because at my first chorus, um, the regions start here at exactly bar 24, exactly a bar earlier um, from the chorus hitting. And over here at my second chorus, uh, these regions are starting exactly a bar earlier than the chorus hitting. So in terms of timing, it's right on the money. Um, and I'll do the same um, over here for the third chorus. So one bar early, paste, and there you go. So what I've done is get my first chorus um, and I've copy and pasted that chorus onto the other chorus sections of the song. Um, and it didn't take me long to do at all really. The explanation behind it was long, um, but in practice, it doesn't take that long at all. Now, in terms of authenticity, um, if that's something you're thinking about, um, now you might take the view that this is a bit crude, um, just copy and pasting your chorus. You might not care, in which case, go ahead and, and do that. That's how you do it. Um, but if you'd rather not do that, um, if you think you'd rather play these in separately um, and have a little bit of differing nuance in there as opposed to straight clones. Um, first of all, you could uh, just play it all in again at the separate chorus points, um, just like you might have done for this first one. Or you could still use this technique um, that I've just shown you. But what you can do is when you record the first chorus, you could record multiple takes of each part. So for example, play each part in like three times. So effectively, um, you've got three different versions of you playing or singing the chorus your three choruses are there. Um, then you could copy and paste all those takes um, to these other chorus points. Um, and you could have, for example, take one on the first chorus, take two on the second, and take three on the third. Um, so you're recording it all in one place on the timeline initially, um, where the first chorus is, but you're racking up different takes. Um, and then you would paste all of those take folders across here um, and you just make sure you're not picking the same take for each chorus. Make sure you're picking different ones. Or you could have a bit of a mix. So you might have three separate bass takes on each of these choruses, but maybe one guitar part is perfect and you think, you know what, I'm just going to copy and paste that across. Um, I've already got a perfect take, I'll recycle that. Um, yeah, it's completely up to you. If you want to know more about recording multiple takes and choosing and switching between different takes, I've done a couple of separate videos on that, which I'll link in the description. So um, I hope you got something out of this pretty in-depth um, set of videos on copy and paste functions in Logic. And you can go ahead and try these out for yourself.